this week on the skid factory. I haven't finished fixing Cam's car. It's Christmas time. I've been high-fiving my family and drinking lemon squash. We're going to have a look at uh, Woody's brother's MR2 instead. Check it out, Alan, it's your favourite 90s sports car. MR2 life. This is my brother's 1990 Toyota MR2, it's an SW20. Uh, I'm not going to go into the history of the Toyota MR2s. If you like, check out Donut Media. They've got a cool video on them, up to speed. This car, my brother Matthew has owned for over 10 years now. Uh, he bought it relatively standard of a guy who used to work for Toyota. He did some tasteful mods to it. It had a disco potato turbo on there and a turbo manifold, which Al originally made back at AM Auto with Miles and this car is the reason why Al hates uh, Toyota MR2s because he's had the engine in and out of this thing countless times and busted his knuckles uh, forever and ever on this car. There's a lot of man hours in this car from Al himself uh, and myself included so let's check it out. Let's pop the, the hood or the trunk. I don't know what you call it anyway. This car is a JDM import so it's a hard top, which I know you Americans will appreciate. These came Australian delivered with a few engines. I think it was a 3S GE and a 5SE, I think it was. This import is a 3S GTE. So the engine's here in the back. It's a mid-engined car. Basically, it's a front-wheel drive layout, which would be in the front of the car, uh, that's coming to the back here. The Toyota 3S engine was used in a lot of different cars. Um, the 3S GTE came out in the MR2s, the GT4 Celicas and the Caldinas. There's lots of different generations and variations of these motors, um, all the way up to the Beams, which is a non-turbo with variable valve timing and everything on it. This engine itself is a Generation 2. It is the standard block in this car. A lot of the guys will upgrade uh, to, I believe it's the 5S block, which are apparently stronger. Um, this is making some good power, but we've never had any problems. Not that Matt drives it too much, but uh, maybe we might find out its power limit one day. This motor makes 430 horsepower. It was tuned by the Hoff at Cleveland Exhaust. The current turbo setup on this car is a Garrett GDX 3071 with a custom steam pipe manifold and a teal 44mm wastegate. This manifold Al made back in the day at AM Auto Services. Originally was the GT28 RS, which was thrown in the bin. This turbo manifold and injectors were thrown on and it made an extra like 10 or 20 horsepower, I think it was, which is not, not the best, but mainly because it didn't have the supporting mods to make more power. When it came to upgrading the engine, as I said, Matthew's had this car for 10 years now. So back when the Aussie dollar was good against the American dollar, Matthew hit up Geo at Real Street Performance. Geo met you at Dragwit, you're a legend. Um, and bought a whole heap of parts for this car. There's a bit of a bit of a formula, I suppose, when it comes to any car. And Geo knew what he was talking about with the 3S GTE. So Matt got a set of Wasco pistons, manly rods, Brian Crower 272 cams, ACL race bearings, ARP studs, and I got the car here at the skid factory a few years later after Matthew accumulated all his parts. The engine was built here in the skid factory by myself and I then threw on the rest of the parts. So the turbo setup, which Al had already done, intake and everything was still exactly the same. There was a inlet manifold, which Matthew got also from the States. Didn't quite fit. Um, had to do some chopping and changing to make it work. But it also ended up being an advantage for us to move it into the right spot to suit the water to air intercooler. So the water to air intercooler is actually just something which was purchased off eBay. I then had Matt Tomasini, our good friend with the twin turbo LS Skyline. He folded me up a alloy tank. I've then welded it on there. 
My TIG seals aren't the best, but I still can get the, get the job done. Um, I mounted a heat exchanger under the back of the car. Um, the way that the water to air intercooler works is there is coolant running through the system and instead of it being an air to air system, the water in the intercooler in the engine bay uh, draws the heat away, then travels via obviously a water pump down to the heat exchanger and the heat exchanger dissipates the heat. Usually you would have the heat exchanger mounted at the front. In this case, you can, we, we could have done it. Um, we wanted to experiment with a little bit of things and have it at the back. It does work. It could have some shrouding and stuff made up to make it work better. But when we're at the track at Queensland Raceway, it was a 40 degree day and it did suffer from a bit of heat soak, but at the same time, it had some very good intake temps for, for the temperature of the day. In the process of replacing the engine, we replaced the gearbox. It's an E153, but we replaced it with a LSD variant. Uh, it's got upgraded um, CV joints with the standard drive shafts. Everything's pretty strong. Um, Matthew's even seen a few launches and it's all right. There's a lot of these making some pretty stout power on these standard items and they work very well. In the process also, I painted absolutely everything in the engine bay. It's, it's come out really looking really nice. There's a lot of standard parts still used, but there's a lot of aftermarket parts which we blended in and even stuff like the fuel filler neck I painted in this. Um, Toyota Hilux Grey, which I think looks pretty epic. It goes well with everything else under the engine bay, the anodized fittings and the purple HKS timing belt and cam gears. Engine management is controlled by none other than Haltech, which is a PS1000. Again, when it was purchased was the bee's knees. We've got four Toyota Yaris 1ZZ coil packs and the wiring has been all done by Al. Everything has been redone. When we first got this car tuned by the Hoff down at Cleveland Exhaust, Everything was good, the Hoff's a machine. We had some triggering issues. So it originally had a aftermarket crank trigger wheel, which was originally 36 minus two. We then cut down to a 12 tooth plus one on the can, which made it better. We had some noise issues in high RPM. Cutting it down to 12 tooth made it a lot better, but it still didn't fix our problem. So we ended up still using the standard distributor, which is 24 plus one. In hindsight, the problem most likely was due to the Hall Effect sensors which were supplied in the kit. They most likely aren't used for an automotive application, probably only to watch a machinery door open and close once every minute. Um, but the standard Reluctor 24 plus one works fine and this application is, is faultless. So why don't we just use that instead? Fuel-wise, it's got an aftermarket rail, which is a Wolfcats item, and that is feeding for Bosch 2000cc injectors, which are then fed by a Dash 8 uh, Speedflow AN line from the boot out of an aftermarket industries tank. So let's check that out. In the boot, or the trunk, we've got our water to air intercooler coolant reservoir here. Next to it, we've got our AI surge tank. So there's a 255 litre per hour uh, in-tank pump which feeds the surge tank. There's a dash eight line to the rail, dash eight line to the reg, and then a dash six line back to the surge tank. A dash six line goes uh, back to the fuel tank. We did a bit of a messing around with the fuel tank. We dropped the tank down and used the standard hard line as the return, and we put a dash six line for the feed to the tank. Um, it works well for the power it's got at the moment. It's it is fine. There's no need to upgrade it at all. In hindsight, I only used rubber hose, which I use Teflon because it does permeate a bit of smell, which is not the best when it's parked up in your garage and you've got young kids and stuff running around. Behind the um, cubby here, we've got our Altec PS1000 wide band controller, fuses and relays. Um, as I said, wide by Al. Um, all done. Very neat. That would be pretty much. Everything, as you can tell, it has got all the bells and whistles. I'd love to throw it up on the hoist and give you a look underneath, but unfortunately the skid factory is full of a lot of projects at the moment and underneath it's, just, it's all basically just plastic fairings for that Toyota streamline race car effect. Um, we are going to go for a drive though, so let's do that. Suspension wise, this thing's got a set of Cusco coilovers. Uh, front brakes has got a set of Z32 300ZX brakes. Um, they are a good piece. A lot of people convert those to a lot of different cars. Good cars. They are, they, are, they are good cars, yeah, they are good cars. It's probably a little bit better than this. We should have left them on the Z. Maybe. 
Um, this thing is a little go-kart to drive. It's very noisy inside. That turbo is right behind your ear. And um, sometimes once that gate cracks open, it's um, pretty scary actually. Has it got a good firewall to stop the rods piercing your back? Yeah, the rods aren't to worry about. The, it's more so probably the, the block cracking, I think. Block cracking was a main problem with these having high power. Um, people extend, it starts all the way down uh, into the block further to stop it from cracking, but thinking once you get to that point, there's just, yeah, it's like any car, you can't, you've got to push a car to a certain point, it's, it's going to, eventually it's going to break. Except 2JZ. little car to drive this thing it is a go-kart on the road um, Alan hates it I think the vibrations stuff with his bowels I think I don't know what it is but it's it's actually got a silencer in the exhaust to quiet it down um, it has got a three inch exhaust all the way back from the turbo and one big ass muffler so there's not much there and I think because it's behind you just that the noise frequencies I don't know it's something about it that and the Four cylinder vibrating to bits. That's why they've got balance shafts in four cylinders. Left here. thing. It's awful. It is pretty bad actually. So taking off with some gnarly vibrations. It's an old school way of making a clutch. Just keep making the thing heavier until it doesn't slip instead of using some science. Science. Hasn't your other brother got one of these too? Uh, my little brother does have an MR2. It is the same colour. But it's the um, former AW11 version. Know what to do, Patrick. Just gotta do what you told, Patrick, and you can do it. Look at that sick car. It's heaps cooler than this. It's like a Peugeot. Hey, cut the corner, dude. Let you do burnouts in it. 
that pretty much sums up the uh, Toyota MR2, the SW20. My brother does love his car and he is going to have it forever, I, I do see. He does have a lot of love for other filthy Volkswagens. Really awful vehicles. Um, he used to have a Mark 1 GTI Golf, which I know a lot of you guys like, and I do like them too, they're cool. I'd actually find that acceptable. Yeah. I'd much after. You know what else I'd find acceptable? What's that? A VR6 engine in your brother's AW11. That would be pretty cool. I think you should come in if you want that done. Uh, put the pressure on Patrick. And he can race AW11 versus SW20. I know which one won't sound all. The Nova will be back. Relax. Uh, Alan's got a bit of work to do on it. Got a bit on. Got a bit on. Um, I'm halfway through sorting it out. Relax. And then we will be able to deliver it back to Cam. I'm sure he's real keen. Yeah. It seems like it's been at my place for a very long time. For what was supposed to be a four day job. Four day build. Four months. Just a straight LS anyway, for you. Anyway, that's, uh, uh, that's cars for you. See you next week. Thanks for watching.